I am going to be using Tight Bond 3 to glue this up. It's a little bit more open time than the other glues I have. Well, that didn't actually work out too bad. I really didn't expect it to work out too well because this Type On 3 is an exceptionally slippery glue. The pieces want to slide all over the place. Had a hard time keeping the clamps on there working right. But as near as I can tell, worked out very well. Now I'm going to do it differently. Got some wax paper on there on my glue press. I'll put this on there after I get these next pieces glued together. Now I'll put some wax paper on top of that. A top block on there, just to make sure it's pushing everything down. Put this disc in there and tighten it until I get all the glue squeezed out that I can. Well, there it is. Got this nice and tight. So a lot of that glue is going to be migrating out of there. I will repeatedly tighten this for a little while. Not lined up perfectly, as you can see, but between the bandsaw and the lathe, I think we can take care of that. So I'm going to let this set up real good for a few hours. Then I've got another, I believe it's six pair to put on there. A pair being one sheet of the poplar and one sheet of the thicker walnut. And when that's all put together, I'll be back. I was trying to decide whether I wanted to use these two surfaces as the top and bottom, cut down into there and across these slices, or if I wanted to use this, these as the top and bottom. And I decided to go with these. So I took it to the bandsaw, cut these two sides straight and parallel. Now I'm going to use this center finder to find the center, which is right there. 
may not be perfect, but it's certainly close. I'm going to draw a circle around here now. And I will take this over to the bandsaw and just nibble off these corners. I've got a three quarter inch blade on there right now. So I'm not going to try to follow the line all around, but I'll chop them off enough to make this easier to turn. Now I'll take it over to the lathe and I hope you'll join me over there. I have this mounted on a four inch face plate. I could have used a six inch, but I'm not sure what I want to do on the top, what will be the top of this piece, this being the bottom. As usual, I'm just going to start turning and see what I feel like getting out of this. Now, if these two ends were perfectly parallel, and if this was square, then this piece of poplar, which I have marked with a pencil and arrow, would be the exact center. But I don't expect it to be perfect, so I'm going to bring up this live center, start this running at 250 RPM, and let it find its own center. And no, I'm not on centered on that poplar, centered on this strip of walnut right here. Well, that's all right. I'm not looking for perfection. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm not looking for it. All right, so this piece is seven inches long right now, seven inches in diameter. I'm gonna get my turning smock on, get ready to start turning this. You can see that I've got a place right here where it did not close up properly, and as well on this end. That's what part of the reason I made this the bottom. I'm hoping to be able to turn that away without losing too much of this piece. So I'll get ready to start turning this and I will be back. I want to use a mortise in this piece. So I have my calipers set at one and one sixteenth of an inch so I can get a two and one eighth inch mortise. I'm going to be turning this at 250 RPM I'm going to just hold this on the center and then use this other side to scribe. All right, I'll start by making a mortise before I take any of this away. I'm going to use my skew chisel to create a dovetail in there for the chuck that I'm using. That should hold just fine in there. I'm just going to bring up the tailstock, let the live center find its center again. Now with that little bit of support, I can start turning this. Half inch bowl gouge, 1000 RPM.
Well, I am not going to get rid of this open unless I shorten this a lot. And I don't want to do that. So I think I'm just going to fill this with some walnut sanding dust and CA glue and just see what that looks like before I go on any further. I packed this on the bottom with walnut sanding dust and Starbond thin CA glue. Now I did not do the sides because I'm going to be turning this away more and I don't want to waste the glue when I might turn past it. I don't think this looks too bad at all on the bottom. If you're looking for it, you'll find it. So don't look for it, okay? All right, I'll set up and do some more turning. It was at about this point that I was thinking, Gord, what the heck are you doing? You spent all that time gluing all this together, and now you're just turning it all away. I had no idea what I was aiming for.
The tail stock kept getting in the way of the handle on my bowl gouge, so I switched to a different 3 8 inch bowl gouge with a 35 degree grind so I could go in a little straighter. I'm starting to think that by the time I get to the bottom of that hole, this might be extremely thin. So I better pull back out here a little bit. Well, that's as close as I can come around there because my tail stock's getting in the way. So I'm gonna to have to take this off and hope that I don't need the support of this live center. The reason I was cutting in instead of across is because it allows me to put force toward the headstock and not come across here and maybe tear this right out of the chuck jaws. I don't know if it's going to show up on the camera, but I have a lot of a rippling developing in here. First of all, this is getting very thin and wanting to vibrate. Secondly, I was positioning this tool rest out so far that I had a lot of overhang from the tool. So I've moved that in to try to reduce that. I've honed the edge of my bowl gouge, and I'll see if that's going to help. I hate to try to just sand that out of there. And I need to go down just a little bit more to get rid of these screw hole evidence. Now I was trying to keep the bevel of the gouge right off of the wood rather than riding the bevel, just using the edge. I'm not putting so much weight against there and it has reduced that rippling a lot. 
Still got some evidence of screw heads there. Wow, okay. Still got some evidence of the screws there. All right, I seem to have gone past the evidence of the screws. Up here, I'm just going to sand everything. I have a real hump right here. Not big, but it's bugging me. So I'm going to put my fingers on the outside to try to stabilize this. Use my right hand on the gouge and my left thumb to guide it and hold it down against the tool rest. Trying for very gentle cuts. But with the vibration, this could be interesting. Well, that has reduced it a bit, but you could probably hear the vibration against the tool caused another few ripples and I'm just going to be forced to sand those out of there. I'm going to sand this off camera, finish it the same way I finished the outside, and I'll be back to show you the results. Well, there you have it. It's finished now. My wife likes it. And first she said it reminded her of Art Deco. Okay, I'm really not sure what Art Deco is. Then she said it reminds her of the tower at the end of the movie, Men in Black. And I can see that, I think. The latest idea from her is that it reminds her of the Seattle World's Fair. So, whatever works for her. For me, I just see a real nice place to store some Smarties. Because for me, everything's a place to store Smarties. Anyway, I hope you like this. Maybe it gives you an idea. This is uh, one of those things, as I said, that I just had no idea when I started recording it, what I was going to do with this. When you start turning without a plan, which is the way I usually do things, it's often surprising what you end up with. I certainly didn't see this in the back of my mind. <laughs> anyway, if not the design, maybe you got an idea from something I was doing. I hope so, and I hope you enjoy it. If you did, I'd really appreciate it if you'd click the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this out with others. Come back next time. You're always welcome in my shop. Between now and then, I hope you have a great day in your shop, and be safe. Take care now. Bye-bye.